What's going on, everybody? This is Dr. Chris Featherstone here for yet another episode of The Legion of Raw. I am here with former WWE head writer of Raw, none other than Vince Russo. How are you? How are you, my man? I'm doing all right, Dr. Chris. How are you? Doing all right, my man. Doing all right. All right, man. So we are about uh, a little less than a month away from uh, WrestleMania, and uh, they they put they packed a lot in this episode. Um, a lot of setups for matches that still aren't official, but it's one step closer to being official. So uh, there's a couple of things that, you know, uh, it, it'll be fun to talk to you about a couple of things that I kind of figure was going to happen, but, uh, we'll see, um, as, uh, the weeks progress going into WrestleMania events, what are your, just your, just your starter 10,000 I just put time. out a uh, I just put out a, a tweet bro the best thing I saw on on Raw tonight was uh, Tony Storm's press conference after the AEW pay-per-view last night because <laughs> with every single one of these matches that I need give a crap about I kept going I kept watching YouTube Mm -hmm. So I saw Tony Storm's uh, 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 scrum last yeah. night. She gave like a an acceptance speech. That was the best thing on Raw, bro. Yeah, yeah. I got, I like I'll, tell you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what really stands out to me, bro. Like, yeah. my God, man, I got to tell you, bro. Um, I watched Rock's promo on Friday night. The, the IG I, one. What's that? The one on IG. No, no, no. I'm talking about oh, uh, the, the, SmackDown. Oh, SmackDown. the SmackDown one. Okay, got you, got you. So I watched Rock's SmackDown on Raw, and then I watched these two in the ring tonight. <laughs> Bro, you're talking about pros versus hacks. Mm. And it it is so evident. I'm challenging anybody to watch those two promos back to back and then tell me who were the pros and who are the amateurs mm -hmm. bro diarrhea Dwayne. he uh, uh wet baby poop yeah. yeah bro you know what's so sad the fact of the matter and and there is truth to this when when seth rollins says the line um you know the rock hasn't been cool in 20 years mm -hmm. Bro, The Rock was super cool and super over 20 years ago without a shadow of a doubt. And basically, when you see Rollins and, and, and Cody in a ring 20 years later, this is what's cool to today's wrestling fan. Yeah. And, bro, I got to tell you, man, holy crap. I, I mean, bro, when you're talking about diarrhea, Dwayne, and then you're getting these wrestling fans are chanting diarrhea. Oh, my God. I, I mean, Chris, come on, man. Well, Vince, I mean, you know, and the fans were – like Pavlovian dogs, man. You know what I mean? They they start chanting diarrhea. And even before that, you know, <clears throat> Cody, <laughs> what was so funny I found out about, what was so funny about this segment to me was when Cody Rhodes, <clears throat> he, was, he, he was cutting his promo and he was trying to defend the audience. Right. He said, do we have any Cody cry babies out here? And everyone's like, yeah, he was like, uh, moving go. You know, like he was trying to defend the fact that they weren't cry babies, but they cheered for being cry babies. Right. And they start it's showing signs of saying, I'm a cry baby. I mean, how Pavlon, how, how Pavlonian can you get when it comes to that stuff, man? Bro, you know, Pavlonian. This is all I could think of, Chris. And bro, remember, remember, it had such a different meaning when we were growing up, bro. Remember when you were a kid growing up, you would say all the time, "This is gay," "That is gay," "This is gay," and what you meant by gay was stupid. Yeah. That, that's what you meant, oh, bro. You're so gay. Like that's mm -hmm. what you meant. Gay was stupid, mm -hmm. bro. I'm I'm watching this promo, and that's what it was bringing me back to. Mm -hmm. Like between you know Seth in the yellow suit and Cody using his big words, and I'm like, and then I'm watching The Rock. 
bro, you, you know, you know, it's so funny, bro. Like I, the people, when, when they love to tear me down, they always love to say, oh, bro, you know, bro, you know, it was different back then, and, you know, because there were no restrictions with the ratings and this, that, and the other thing. And bro, I've been saying for years and years and years, bro, they're nowhere near the PG rating. Mm-hmm. They're absolutely nowhere near it. Don't, don't give me, you know, the, the rating of the show as an excuse. Rock comes out there and says whatever he wants to say, yeah. bro. Everybody's a crackhead, which which they would have been allowed to say all those things for the last 20 years. Sure, sure. But it's yeah. like the, the, the differences in those two promos, I think, really shine a light on two very different times in wrestling. And, yeah. bro, I'm, I'm going to say it again. If if this opening promo was cool, mm-hmm. then I don't want to be cool, bro. I'm totally mm-hmm. fine being a 63-year-old old fart sitting at home. If this is cool, bro. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, I, th- I think at this point, Vince, and, and I guess this is my question for you because it's this interesting thought that I had. So... Clearly, they gave and they're giving the Rock carte blanche on uh, on his promos. Well, yeah, you think I, they're I, doing that with uh, Cody and Seth? You know what it is, Chris. I don't think they're giving the Rock carte blanche, bro. Who's going to say no to the Rock? So, like, th- think about that. Triple H is going to say no to the Rock. Mm. Ari's going to say no to the Rock. Rock knows darn well he can go out there and do whatever he wants to do. And 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 bro, it's, why wouldn't it, he advocate for Cody and Seth to do that? I think he. I think I don't. I don't think any handcuffs. Are, I I think this is the best these two guys really? are. You without think oh, bro, without a shadow of a doubt, <laughs> bro, bro, we saw. We saw we just saw a couple of weeks ago when Romans buried Seth and his title, yeah. and then Seth had no comeback. Bro, right. the problem is here's the problem. If you watch all the shows, SmackDown goes first. Mm. So you you see the rock promos and then you see Roman Reigns, mm. and then you see these two guys follow up with diarrhea Dwayne. It the, the way Rollins set that up, it was almost like he was afraid to say it because mm. he didn't know if it was gonna go over or not. Yeah, bro, you should have been afraid to say it yeah. because that was horrible and chris here's another thing man i don't get this for the life of me they did it again rollins makes a big deal about we're gonna be on smackdown on friday Mm -hmm. okay bro meanwhile you've got the bloodline here in the arena and you're gonna kayfabe them till the last five minutes of the show when everybody's in bed Right. That's the part that I don't understand, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Really good points there. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk more about it as uh, we get through the card here. We got Zoo Bear $2 super chat, bro. <laughs> that show gave me diarrhea. Rollins yeah. is terrible. Yeah. yeah. I hope, uh, yeah. hope you got that taken care of, uh, Zoo Bear. I hope you feel better, man. $5, Zoo Bear. Uh, this is interesting. Thoughts on AEW cutting off Sting during his retirement speech goes to show WWE and AEW sucks at pacing their shows, matches too long and boring. Well, there was a promo tonight that cut uh, got cut too uh, when McDonough was in there with uh, with uh, I think it was in there with, yeah, it got cut. I mean, it got cut. They they went abruptly to commercial. Yeah, I think uh, it seemed like that was on purpose because um, Priest was like. Um, talk to him and then we'll get back to it or something like that. It was, it was, a, it was a weird transition, oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah Priest yeah, kind of set yeah. that up. Um, yeah, well, I, I watched uh, Revolution last night and it, it was, it was interesting because Sting was cutting the promo and uh, Darby Allen kept coming to him and like whispering stuff in his ear and he was kind of, Sting was just kind of saying, okay, you know. And then he whispered something else in his ear for the second time. And then it just went off air, you know? And so it, it was interesting because the timing just weren't right. But I don't, I think that they, you know, Tony Khan just gave the mic to sting whatever he wanted to do. But it, I, my, my thing is it would have made sense of 
Tony Khan would have bought some overage there if he if he would have got some some time extended at least about five or ten minutes uh, past yeah. midnight um, because you know this this being Sting's last match and this having to you know this having this big moment and I and, you know of course Twitter had the full interview or the full segment it was only a few more minutes after it was cut off air so bro please because I did not watch it please tell me when sting cut his fail, farewell promo please tell me at some point darby allen left the ring and sting was in there alone no he was in the corner bro bro you, bro, you, you see what i mean this, this, this these kids don't have a clue they don't have a clue bro you don't even know when to give somebody the ring. What, the, the, bro? What a! J it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. You know, it's so you funny. Don't know when you're supposed to give somebody the ring, bro. Precisely. And what's interesting about that is I was looking at this, and I was with two of my friends, and um, <clears throat> I was like, you know, there it was. It was a consensus in the room. And we were like, uh, look, Darby Allen needs to leave the ring. Uh, and, then I, and then I was like, what I think should happen. I mean, Sting should pay it forward at this point. He's undefeated. He was undefeated in AEW. And what I think should have happened is Sting cuts the promo. And then wham, Darby Allen does a low blow. And then you cut off air because that leaves a cliffhanger to watching Dynamite to see why Darby turned on Sting. Darby could have easily said, okay, why would I, you know, celebrate Sting leaving? I, I can't be tag team champions anymore. The titles have to be vacated. I've been under the shadows of Sting for the past three years. And now is my opportunity to shine. That causes people to want to watch Dynamite. Now it's just Tony Khan, the press, were saying, oh, yeah, well, we're going to vacate the titles. I mean, that, why would someone want to watch Dynamite after this? Sting, pe people who are coming in because of Sting are, are leaving because Sting is retiring. Chris, you are 100% correct, but let's back that up. How did they ever get to a position where Sting was a tag team champion in his final match to begin with? Yeah, yeah. That, he said he didn't want to do it. He said yeah. on a presser, he said he didn't want to do it. That was all Tony Khan. Bro, that is so ridiculous. Yeah. His final match, he's tag team champion. And when he leaves, th th that makes Sting yeah. look bad. Yes. It really yeah. does make does. Sting look bad. That's, <laughs> Chris, this is what yeah. I'm telling you about. You You've got talent and you've got people far up the food chain that don't have a clue yeah. to what they're doing. That tag team championship should have never been a part of it, bro. Yeah. Nobody should have to tell Tony Khan that. That's common sense, bro. Yep, I agree with you, man. It, it didn't mean anything. I mean, it meant nothing, man. Like even if even if this the the tag team match was a non-title match. It would have had the same impact, the same impact. I even forgot that it was many times in the match. I forgot it was even for the championship. Yes. That the, the sell the selling point alone is Sting's last match. It didn't need a title with it. They just they don't know how to do stuff the right way, bro. Yeah. I don't I don't want to hear a, we're we're bitter and this and that. No, bro, it, th that should have never been the circumstance in yep. his last match. Yep, I agree, I agree. And even it, and since it was to me, since it was, if you are going to use that, why not turn Darby? Like otherwise. Similar to what I was saying last night, and what you just said, which makes so much sense, leave the ring. Leave, leave are the you ring. Kidding me, bro? Like that's one of bro. If you're bro, there, there are th bro, Chris. I've got to tell you this, man. You're a lot like me, bro. This is what I don't understand about today's talent. Okay, Chris, when I became an on-air talent, like you. 
I had watched for years and years and years. So, Chris, I had an instinct of what to do. Mm -hmm. I knew what to do having watched for so many years. And how, how can you not know a guy's given his retirement speech, get out? I, bro, I remember times when I was in the ring with Dusty. And I had to clear the way and give Dusty set center stage. That was from me watching yep. for years and years and years and seeing what they did and understand what they did. Bro, half of the talent today do not understand that, not to mention Tony Khan. <laughs> Case in point, he was right next to Sting during the was. press conference. Of course he was, bro. Of course. <laughs> yep, sure was, man. Uh, we got Zoo Bear five dollars super chat. <clears throat> Rollins really has the nerve to say all that about the Rock is trash. Diarrhea and wrestling never stop being cool. If so, why people don't watch? If you, you know what the funny thing is, though, Zoo Zoo Bear. Here's the funny thing, Chris. Th th this is where Rollins is ignorant. Do you know what Rock is going to do with that promo? Oh, <laughs> do you that. know what Rock... Bro, eat him for dinner, man. And not only eat him for dinner, bro, it's going to be face-to-face -face next week. Bro, yes. you Ooh. put these two jabrones face-to-face <laughs> with Rock. It's game over. Yeah. It is. Do you know what he's going to do to Rollins next week, bro? Yeah. And yeah. bro, and 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 that's the problem with this promo too, bro. It's like, and Rollins even said it in the promo. It's like, bro, Rock is their boss. Yeah. So the the things that you're saying, uh, bro, I think there's gonna be ramifications. Yeah. Like yeah. To, to, it's stuff like that that just, bro, they're they're all over the place, man. <clears throat> but you know what, Chris? These fans today. Bro, they'll buy anything. Oh, absolutely. They'll 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 buy anything, bro. Anything. Like I said, man, it's 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 Pavlovian dogs, Vince. Yep. Yep. They'll just they'll just bite what's they'll they'll just react what's given to them, whatever it is. They'll salivate over it, man. And so that's what I mean. Just I mean, again, case in point, the Cody crybaby was a derogatory term, right? And Cody Rose didn't. So he didn't support that at all. He was trying to speak against it. Guess what? Now people are proud of being Cody Crybabies. Yep, exactly. That is precisely yep. my point, Vince. That's what we're at. That's where we're at now with fans. That's where we're at with wrestling fans. Instead of understanding the stories, buying into the characters, it's wow, I get to be a Cody Crybaby. That's well, it, let me make a poster about it too. You know what I mean? That's that's and and and, and these are the cool kids today. Yeah, they're, they're the cool kids, wow. exactly. Uh, Zoo Bear, five dollars super chat. Thoughts on SmackDown this past Friday was night and day. I think he's trying to say better than Raw sucks. Smarks angry at Rock just because the segment was long because they're um, match marks. What did you think about the Rock segment uh, overall? I, I just, you know, bro, like I said, I it, it was refreshing to me because nobody's going to tell him what to say. Yeah, yeah. He's going to yeah. come out and he's going to say what I, I was waiting. Um, the, the only thing, bro, I, I was waiting from the call him, you know, crack house. You, you know the word that follows. <laughs> I'll say hose. I was waiting that. I'm like, bro, nobody <laughs> is going to tell this guy what he can and cannot say. Nobody. <laughs> and, bro, let me tell you something. He's going to see this promo tonight. Oh, man. He's going to be salvating yeah, to yeah. have these guys in the ring. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and that's what I, and that's what I love about rock with the old school mentality, man. I mean, he's just uh, he's a pro. He's a pro, he's man. A pro. You, you got to give it to him, man. He's, he's, he's a, a pro. pro. He's, he's a like pro. he's like, all right. OK, so you want me to heal it up. OK, bet. I'll, I'll do that and I'll stay in character. And if I am playing the heel, I'm going to make sure that y'all boo me like I'm not here for y'all to cheer me now since I'm the heel. So I'm going to call you crack. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll call you <laughs> crack, baby. <laughs> crack, baby. Crack, baby. Crack, baby. Crack, baby. Was shooting up, it was shooting up, bro. He, he, was shooting up. Up. he was a Utah talk about 50 wives. I mean, like, come on, man. You got to love it. I mean, that is old school 
this heel is, mentality, man. I this love is, it, bro. I'm telling you, this is you're getting a taste of the old school versus a new school, Absolutely. and you're gonna and you're gonna have it all in the ring on yep. Friday. And yep. let's see what happens. Bro. And that's interesting because that that does create some intrigue because it is the old school versus new school segment. You'll see it all in one ring, and you'll see such a fall from grace, man. I mean, like. You 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 had such a river. I mean, calling Seth Rollins an emoji clown, a walking emoji. I mean, like, like Seth Rollins. You know, he gives the Rock easy oh, material to work yeah. with. I mean, yeah, he bro. just hands yeah. the Rock material every single week, exactly. and now he's really handing the Rock oh. material with this promo. He's going to make it easy for him. So. That's why, bro. I like I I I I'm holding out hope. I really am holding out hope that a lot of the old guard there, you know, still feels the way I do. Because, bro, if Reigns goes over, like, if Reigns goes over, bro, and and I'm hoping, I'm hoping Triple H is still that killer Kowalski old school. I'm hoping, bro, because, oh my God, if Cody doesn't go over, bro, man, if if Cody does not go over, the fans will go on an uproar. But you know what? The interesting part about this is nobody's going to stop watching them. They bro. ain't going nowhere, bro. Oh, that's man. why That's why you got to do it. That's like, why you got to do it, man. That's why they ain't going nowhere, yeah, bro. bro. I'm, I'm so with you on that, man. Yep. We got Rollin 999 Super Chat. <clears throat> is it possible that Brian Gowarts is so. riding only for The Rock and others are riding for Rollins and everybody else? I heard that Gowarts is uh, the only – is the consultant who tried to stop Roman suffering succotash. Hmm. Very much so. Absolutely, Roland, without a shadow of a doubt. Without I can see that too. Yeah. yeah. Bro, because – and, bro, listen, I, my experience in working with The Rock, you just had to give him guidelines for the promo. The, the promo was his, like mm -hmm. you ju just like Austin, bro. You gave you game guns. So I don't think Gewurz is writing anything, um, you know, like direct lines for The Rock. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I, I really, I, I really don't believe that. But it's like you know, bro. I, I swear to God, I think The Rock is in with guys like Rollins and 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 Cody. I think Rock is in the okay, bro. Let's see how over you guys are. Sure. Let's yeah. see it, bro. Let bring bring you know, rock, bring it. <laughs> like seriously. And, and I think, bro, you're going to see that on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I just I don't see the rock whatsoever getting upstaged by yeah, uh, Cody bro. or Seth. Yeah. Uh, and and like you're you're going on the stick with the rock, and you just came from saying a diarrhea Dwayne. You're asking for it. Yeah, man. You're, you're, everything you get, you deserve, bro. Yeah, you're about, asking for it. Talk about low-hanging fruit, man. Woo. Pluck it right down. There you go, man. It's 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 low. <laughs> it's, it's low, low, low. Um, got Carl uh, uh, $10. What do you guys think of Paul Heyman, the very first person to be inducted to the 2024 WWE Fame class this year who should – who should, uh, I guess, induct Paul Heyman? Maybe CM Punk or Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns. Um, I mean, I, I, I knew that Paul Heyman is in Philly. It's, I mean, it was, yeah, yeah he, I think it was pretty, pretty evident that he was going to be on the fame. Who do you think should induct him, Vince? I have no idea, bro. I, I mean, I, I don't know in his personal life which one of these guys is closest to him. I, I have, n it should be the guy the closest to him, and I don't know who that would be. Hmm. I mean, he was an advocate for Brock Lesnar, but he's pretty much canceled for a while, or you know, or why he's blacklisted. So I don't, I don't see that's being approved. Um, Punk. I mean, he had a he had a stint with them, but I don't, I don't think that's going to be. I don't think Punk's going to do it. But Roman Reigns, who would have to break character right before WrestleMania, 
So I don't, I don't maybe know. it's gotta be. It seems like it's gotta be like it, it, it's in Philly, bro. They're gonna use that ECW alumni, the Dud- maybe the Dudleys, the Dudleys, Dreamer, yeah. like Dreamer. you know. Yeah. See, they they get they're gonna milk that ECW yeah. alumni, no yeah. doubt. You know, I can see that. I can see that. Yep, I can see. I mean, the Dudleys would make sense to me, um, <clears throat> since they were one of the most successful people that came out of ECW. Uh, we have uh, weather 499 super chat. It would have nice, it would have been nice for Lex Luger, the Steiners, and Ric Flair to be there. First time watching AEW, Tony Khan is a very awkward person. Uh, yeah, he, he is, he's a gem, man. He, he, he is a gem. Uh, but I do think, um, uh, to, Flair was there. He's, is he talking about? It would have been nice for. I, I, was he talking about yesterday? Luca well, was Flair there. was there. Luca yeah. was there. Yeah, both of them were there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bro, could I share my screen with you? Yeah, absolutely. I put this up on uh, Twitter today. Mm-hmm. I want you to say, is it just me, or or is there a, is there a resemblance here? <laughs> Pull it up on the screen. All right, I got you. Come on. There we go. Bro, look, bro. <laughs> look at the sh- look at the shape. Bro, first of all, Vincent Price is wearing a pos- pr- prosthetic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bro. Bro, come on. The next Batman remake, bro. Um, I don't think that's look at that. Heyman would I mean, he, you know, Heyman's got the Caesar uh, thing going on. He didn't have a bald head, so you know, man, look at that. Okay, I, I mean, just, that's that's I mean, that's Heyman for you, man. Yeah. He's uh, he's been like that for a while. So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> I guess I I know that you you and Heyman are, aren't aren't the best of friends, but I, I imagine you would agree that he did. You know, he's a Hall of Famer, right? He uh, inductor. Or would you not? What, what do you think about that, bro? W- 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 okay, I, 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 I'll give you my answer based on WWE's credentials. I'll give you my answer when I can really walk through the halls of the Hall of Fame <laughs> uh, and see everybody who's in it, and th- and then I'll make my decision, bro. When I can actually walk in the building gotcha. and see the plaques on the wall that. Mm. Bro, it's such a so based on the WWE criteria. Do you think that he's yeah, ab- one thousand percent? Okay, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Yeah, I mean, come on, bro. Yeah. No, there's no no question about that. I'm I'm just saying to me to me the Hall of Shame has always been a a, a sham. That's all. <laughs> I don't care who's in it, bro. It's like, come on. Was there ever any talks back in the day of uh, having a uh, brick and mortar? Not, not, no, not, not, never serious talks when I was there. Bro. Really? Never, never. never. Well, they're, they're building development. They're building performance centers and they have the budget. Why aren't they making a brick and mortar? Because bro, movie? I, you know, I've said this all along, bro. It's like all the W all the hall of fame is, is extra programming and content. Mm. Remember the slammies? That's what the Hall of Fame is, bro. It's another show. Mm. That's all it is, bro. It's another show for them to sell. That's mm. all it is, man. Man, I used to I used to really like the Hall of Fame um, shows. I've been to a one or two, two of them uh, live, and it was fun. I mean, that was at the one Goldberg. I was at the Goldberg one, and now I forgot what the other one was. DDP and I think Bischoff was on there, uh, but the one with Goldberg, um, it was it was cool. But man, people started to you know boo Goldberg, and then uh, by that time it was like it was long. Man. Oh, bro, bro, I I went I went to one. I wasn't at it, but I was in town for the weekend, so we watched it in some catering hall or something. I went to the one, bro. When freaking Zabisco went on forever, I, I I literally wanted to take my own life. Wow! He went on and on and on, and I was sitting there like, "Are you freaking kidding me, bro?" 
Mm. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, it seems like they've given time limits for everyone now, except for the the closer. I mean, in a in a huge turn of events, though, I think that the Undertaker's speech was amazing. I mean, did you see that one? Did you see when Undertaker? Yeah, I don't, I don't check, watch that stuff. You, go check, go check the Undertaker's out, yeah. man. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Um, his speech was really good, man. He talked about his faith and stuff like that, and Michelle and stuff. It was it was really it was really good. good um, <clears throat> we got. Uh, Cole jacked up 499. Why is it taking this long to get Rhodes to SmackDown? They are more worried about building the tag match than the champ match. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I don't understand. I, I don't I don't get listen. I could understand Rock because he's got other commitments. I yeah. I, I I get that. But you know, Reigns being on Raw and Cody, I, I don't understand it, bro. And I said that a couple of weeks ago, man. I still don't get it. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, 199 Kojak. The priest is going to cash in on Cody. I think that's probably a point 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 zero 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 one percent chance. But that would be funny, though, if uh, Cody finished the story just to uh, get a cash in by Priest. But I don't see how that would. I don't, I don't see how that would work, though, if, if Priest yeah. cashed in. What do you think Priest? I mean, Priest only has like a few months left, man. What? Where do you think he's going to insert the cash in at? God, bro, I hate to say this. Oh, my God. And I hope, Chris, you are so right, but you are so wrong, but you have a tendency to be right. Um, the only thing I could see them doing is, God forbid, Sami Zayn beats Gunther. God forbid... I could see I could see them going down a level and that's where Priest cashes it in against Sami Zayn to become the Intercontinental. I I can see that because bro think about it. For, first of all, first of all, Drew has to beat freaking Seth Rollins. Oh, absolutely. I I, I don't I don't want to hear anything. 100%. No way he's going to cash it in against no. Drew McIntyre. No. And on the other side of the coin, bro, I, I, I'm i really starting to believe more and more and more R Roman's going to go over. I'm really starting to believe that. I but, sure hope so, man. But, but either way, <laughs> regardless of who goes over, he's not going to cash it in there either. So the the one that makes the most sense, see that that see, bro. I, I gotta tell you, bro. He he here's 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 what I'm afraid of. If they do that Sami Zayn thing and he gets that belt off Gunther and say Damian Priest does a run in, bro, for as much of as they've built Gunther, I just feel like they're gonna let him fall all the way down mm, if if bro yeah. i i am so high on Gun bro gunther outshines the rest yeah i agree i would never take the intercontinental belt off of gunther i would have had him forfeit the title mm. when he felt it was time to go for the world championship mm. that that's what i would have had him do i would have never beat him I would whether it was Seth or Reigns or whoever has the two big titles, mm -hmm. um, I would have had him turn it in, relinquish it. It's time for me to you know go to the next level. Mm -hmm. But if 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 they do that, bro, I just feel you're gonna see him fall down in the middle of the pack. I sure hope not. See, he's been there for a while. He was in NXT uh, UK for a while. He had the UK championship for like a couple of years like it, it, it was his reign was just as long as his intercontinental title reign um and then but his but the thing is man they've protected gunther for his whole time there. They he, have. he was in nxt they and have. especially on the main roster right he's he's not damaged goods at this point like he's he's been protected and so i think if there's anyone who would be worthy of becoming world champion it would be Gunther. It would be Gunther, and he would protect the world championship, and they would do – you know, I understand, you know, if they do the Sammy thing, that's going to appease the crowd because that's, that's what they do anyways, and that's what they've been doing. But, man, I just – I don't think they should have a Money in the Bank pay-per-view pay in stakes anymore if 
people are cashing in on mid card championships. That that to me makes absolutely no I sense. I agree. I agree with that, Chris. Because here's the thing: you're you have random intercontinental championship matches on any given Raw. Why does someone have to earn a uh, a, a briefcase to use it? Where you can just go and add uh, Adam Pierce's office on a random week and ask for a title shot. I mean, like it wouldn't make sense to use the case for it because that's a lack of planning, Chris. Yeah, sure. It's it a is. lack. Absolutely. It's a lack of planning. I mean, that's that's all it is. You know, listen, man. If there's injuries or something like that, that's one thing. Yeah. This is a lack of planning, bro. Yeah, man. It is. It, it, it's, it's, it is a lack of planning. And last year, Austin Theory won it, and he unsuccessfully cast it in on uh, Seth Rollins. And no not way. only that, what did what what did it do for Austin Theory when nothing he had it? zero? And absolutely nothing, man. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. And I think at the end of the day, you're having these cash ins on mid card championships, man. It just goes to show that there's such a huge gap between the two or three main event talent that they have and the mid card talent back in the day we had the warriors here we had the roots here the hennix here and so <clears throat> even in this echelon here the intercontinental championship uh savage was intercontinental champion it was still like a way a stepping stone to get to the world championship so it wasn't such a huge gap now it's a huge gap between the two, man. And now you're getting a uh, uh, now you're getting an opportunity to become world champion, and you're cashing it in for mid card championship. Bro, that, that's horrible. You know, bro, that's why I'm saying it's something as simple, Chris. It's something as simple as this. You know, Cody has the Cody has the match with freaking Reigns. Mm -hmm. Bro, have Punk screw Cody. And then, yeah. bro, half punk screw Cody, and then that's where I would do the Gunther, the Gunther thing. I would go to Reigns and Gunther next. I mean, Reigns would never expect I'm cashing in the end of content. I mean, I'm interested in that, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 interested in that because I'd be curious to see the way they book that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, bro, that's that's all you have to do, man. Mm. That would be interesting because, uh, you know, I'm a big uh, proponent of baby faces and heels, especially with this <laughs> with this crowd. But it would be interesting to see where they would go with that because I, Roman Reigns definitely are, isn't being cheered. And Gunther's such a good heel, man. He, he's, he's so good at what he does. I'm all, I'm all for trying new things out and seeing where this goes because he was a, he's been a heel throughout you know his entire career for the most part especially in his time in wwe and it's easy for him to get cheered i mean you know bro, case I, in point I, I, tonight I, against dominic he was cheered so. bro i think you put him up against reigns he's cheered like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll get cheered no yeah. question about you gotta it. give me a story though man you gotta make it make sense of why such a menacing heel is cheerable now you know what i mean like i'm not, uh, that, I'm not that, that's person. the crowd he, he he wouldn't change one iota yeah he that's the not thing change at all and that's the thing if you're giving me just simple crowd reaction to 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 create the story i'm not i'm not for it because they they do it way too much now the crowd think they have so much power to do whatever they want now if you're giving me a story of why someone's deciding to like the like the big boss man, for instance, a perfect example. He came in as a heel, right? And he was he was super just just uh, antagonistic, and then he started he started to turn more to the baby babyface route about being in law and or justice, and you know he was the the twin towers with him and Akeem and Slick started to be a little you know slimy, and then he started to turn over you know to a babyface, and he was a really really good babyface for for a while during that time, and, and so it was a it was a reason why he turned over to the good side from a heel, and I think if you're really trying to keep these characters up and not just give me some crowd reaction which flips anytime any given week anyways give me a story behind it if that's just if there's a story behind guther coming to the good side and finally turning babyface, i'd be all for it i'll, I'll be in for that so
Uh, let's see. We got Zoo Bear TV. Five dollars. Um, oh no, we got uh, oh, we got a few. We got a few here. We'll get back. We'll we'll get Zoo Bear and then there's there's two before him. So it says, Dear Russo, what were the best memories? Um, working with Sting, also Doctor and Russo. How you guys think came an induction speech without mentioning Brock? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> he probably won't be able to mention Brock. Uh, I, I I can't see him not mentioning Brock, bro. I can't Ooh, see. Him. That's going to be difficult with all the legal stuff going on man, now, man. Mm, that's a tough one, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's not going to want to risk his job. You know, if he if he does mention Brock, he'd be in the hot seat, man. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Now, what's your favorite mem memories working with Sting? My favorite memories working with Sting were personal. Uh, Chris, and you'll appreciate that because um, when I first became a Christian, Sting was kind of like the guiding light for me. Mm. Um, he, he, I mean, he was there for me when I first found my Christianity, and and that that was the most meaningful thing to me um that that i will never ever ever forget yeah i love that man absolutely that go well, i want i want to share something with you that bro, I, I get so i get so pissed off when nobody talks about nobody talks about the big news they talk about the show mm -hmm. do you know that today bro and you'll probably read about this three days from now Vince McMahon cashed in all his TKO stock at four hundred and eleven million dollars. Did you know that? No. He's uh, he's pulling out, uh, you know, knowing that's that's probably a, a way to uh, do what he did last time. I mean, right, right before he uh, came back and became a member of uh, you know the merge, he. he he pulled out his stock too. Well, it could also be though that the uh, he's worried about the Fed's freezing his assets because that's what they do. Well, there you go too. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do, bro. <laughs> they they freeze your assets, and so he may want to take that cash and yep. hide it hide it under the mattress, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's... Bro, what do you what do you do with four hundred and eleven million dollars, Chris? If you're if you're Vince McMahon at almost eighty years old, I'm asking you. What what what, oh, what, what would I do? What, what do people like us do? For, what do you do with four hundred eleven million dollars? Um, well, I, I would invest. I, I would definitely invest. I would uh, invest in um, uh, many things. Actually, I, I'm I'm into like uh, uh, real estate, <clears throat> and so I would I would buy a lot of real estate. And yeah, invested in in you know, make the money work for me. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I would be charitable too. I'll be very charitable. crazy. Crazy. Uh, let's see. We got, uh, Oh yeah. I was saying, um, to your sting thing. Um, I mean, no, no, <laughs> no booking television, uh, wrestling match. None of that. No, bro. The thing is, bro, here's the thing I really loved about sting at TNA. Uh, Bro, here's a guy that was a legend, an icon, you know, just did it all in his career. Did it, did it, did it, did it all. And this is what I love about Sting more than anything else. I proposed the Joker Sting to him. Mm -hmm. Now, bro, at that point in his career, he don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He could keep it the way it is. But, bro, he so embraced that character and took such a chance with that character. And, bro, I got to tell you, wh whether you loved it or hated it, that's not what I'm talking about. His acting performances during that time where he had a character that was so – bro, let's face it, the crow didn't really talk mm -hmm. for a very, very, yeah. very long time. When he took on that persona as Joker Sting, bro, he put me – he blew me away. Yeah, he was really he, good. He blew me away that a he was willing to do it and b he committed to it 
and C, he was freaking great at. Yeah, he knocked out the park, man. He yeah. Did. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got uh, Code Jacked Up 199. <clears throat> Priest is going to cash in on Cody. Um, I said, we, did we pull that yeah, one up already? Yeah, you already pulled yeah. that one up already, Chris. Yeah, Junior in $5. <clears throat> Rock, McIntyre, Hangman, and Tony Storm doing good heel work for 2020 in 2024. What did you think of all the heel versus heel stuff tonight? Yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. I was I was thinking about that too. It didn't really make any sense for me um, because I, I just man all these all these matches that they're just putting together just just for the sake of it because. When they did Gunther Dominic, Dominic got the heat and Gunther got cheered for Imperium. So Imperium was the baby faces, Jasmine were the heels. But when they did Finn and Damien against Kaiser and Vinci, Kaiser and Vinci was getting uh, uh, jeered. And when Finn and Damien won, they got cheered. So Jasmine Day's the heels when Dominic and Gunther, but they're the baby faces in the tag match. Stuff like that, Vince, well, is the reason why casuals don't watch. They're confused. Well, Chris, here's here's what happens, bro. And I've said this a million times. When you take away the characters and you take away the storylines, all you have are matches. Yep. Bro, you're going to run out of matches. Yeah, absolutely. So now, Okay, yep. so now we're going heel versus heel yep. because they're running out of matches. Yep. You don't have to rely on matches, bro, when you got storylines and characters, bro. Sure. I mean, we come on, Chris. We we'd seen Jay and and, and Drew before. Yep. We seen Nia Jax and Becky Lynch before. We've seen all this, so now they're just looking for matches that we haven't seen before. Indeed, hundred yeah, percent. Well said, man. I agree. Um, let's see here. I think did we talk about this one here? Um, uh, uh, tomorrow, no, no. five dollars. You guys think you think The Rock will betray the bloodline against Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins in their tag match, tag team match? I think you want to say, I don't think so. I, I, if if they do, it's way, way too soon with, with, with the heat The Rock has right now. To blow it off that way that soon? Absolutely not. I actually think that they will. The Rock will get. So you, you cover SmackDown now, right? Yeah. On your on your channel. So the Rock's been doing this thing. I didn't I didn't really make a thing of it at first, but like when he, so especially on. I mean, he was super sappy on on SmackDown. He, he acknowledged Roman Reigns. Uh, so I'm like, okay, clearly he's going to turn on him, but he does this, <clears throat> he does this thing now when he put the ones up, you know, at first he did the L and then now he, he, he made it a little bit more intriguing because when they did the ones up, it was like this. And then he did like this, put the L up and then he went back and did the, the, the one sign. So I think that again, man, those, those, those Easter eggs is causing, it's causing discussion again. That's why I say the rocks are pro because that type of stuff causes cliffhangers, causes intrigue, causes discussion, not some match, but the very fact that he did a promo, he acknowledged Roman reigns. He's kind of having some subtle type of message with his, you know, uh sign, pointing and things like that those are the intricacies that we're looking for when it comes to storyline development not match after match after match right. after match but i think here what call is talking about is way too soon now now what i could see chris is Ro roman going over hmm. and rock rock then wanting a match against i could see it there Bro, if they yeah. do it, if they do it within the next three weeks, I think that's way too soon. I don't think The Rock is going to be there as full time as he is in this season, though. So I think that he'll leave and probably come back during Ooh. SummerSlam. I agree it's, with that. And I so if he that. if he does that, I think you leave on a positive note. 
come back for SummerSlam, and then you can do Rock Reigns there non-title. Yeah. So I think that's probably what's going to happen. I think that somehow he's going to cost because the the stipulation is if the Bloodline wins the tag match, it's Bloodline rules. Anything goes. Which okay, I mean you've been doing that every week on Raw. It's it's been it's been Bloodline rules, but if it's if the Bloodline loses the bloodline can't be involved in Cody's match against Roman Reigns. So what I think would be interesting, and again, this this is good storytelling. What would make sense, what would be, this is a, a, a really interesting layer in the bloodline feud, especially Cody uh, running it back for the second year in a row. Right now, it's just kind of Cody versus Roman still. But if you have Cody Rhodes this whole time pulling on the rock from within to help him dethrone the bloodline. And this all was a ruse the entire time for the rock to align with Cody to go against the bloodline. That would be an interesting uh, element in the storyline to me. Bro, that's going to be tough with him calling <laughs> the entire crowd in you know, Utah crackies. <laughs> but, but, but here's the thing. If they, if, if they, are okay with being Cody crybabies. They're okay with being meth heads. Bro, it to me, to me, if Cody and Seth go over and the bloodline is not allowed to interfere in that match, you are opening it up for somebody else to screw Cody. Like who? CM Punk. Punk won't be, I mean, he, he'll, he'll be gone for a few months though. Doesn't matter, bro. Can put them on the mic. They'll probably do SummerSlam will most likely be Punk and Drew for the world title. That's all. I say. He, he's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, seven no, months. Summer, no, SummerSlam. But Summer. I'm talking about he's been out since January. Yeah, so he'll but he'll be back. Uh he'll he'll be back uh probably within the next uh I mean like the 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 severity of the issue, the severity of the injury is, is going to take a few months. Yeah. So he'll probably be back summertime, which would be a good setup for SummerSlam. I mean, he still, Drew still talks about CM Punk and he yeah. still, you know, sows the seeds for, for CM Punk. So I definitely think that you'll have uh, Drew and, um, Drew and Punk for SummerSlam. I also think that in, in this, I think that Seth is going to turn on Cody too. So I do think you'll, I think you'll have Rock Roman non-title. I think you'll have Drew versus CM Punk, and I think you'll have Seth versus Cody at uh, at, at SummerSlam. I think those will be your three marquee matches for SummerSlam. Um, what else we have? We have uh, Michael. Solano, Sergeant Slaughter, Doc was good. R.I.P. Butcher Vashon. You have any Butcher Vashon uh, stories? No, nah, I didn't work with him. I, I don't think I work with him. I think I met him, but I don't think I work with him at all. But of course, you work with Luna, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was an interesting uh, factor about uh, Luna that people that, may not know about. God, bro, that. I, I, you know, Chris, it's funny, man, because I was watching a match the other day. Luna Vashon against Jackie. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, those were probably <laughs> perhaps the two toughest females in the history of the business. You you would have to throw, bro, uh, Mueller in there. I would throw Medusa in there. I would throw Sherry in there. Mm -hmm. But those were two of the toughest girls. And the thing about Luna was, bro, she was so tough because of her family. And she was all, so old school, but like the complete opposite. Mm. Like a sweet, sweet, sweet heart of a person. You would have never believed that those people were one and the same. Mm, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, we got the Out of Pocket Variety Show, a new donor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. $5. They should turn the old Titan Tower building into the physical Hall of Fame. Perfect That's place. That's not a bad idea, bro. Easy to get to. Like, it's right off the highway, uh, right outside of New York. Uh, that's not a bad idea at all, bro. Yes. P.S. 
Cody and Rollins will be on SmackDown this Friday. Yes, they'll be on SmackDown this week. Um, how about the other? How about the old WWF New York restaurant as the uh, Hall of Fame? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever eat there? No, never. You never ate at WWF New York. No. no. <laughs> what do you think of the uh, of the creation? Uh, as oh, was... every, every time Vince tried to go outside <laughs> of wrestling, it was a mess and a half, bro. Yeah. I go pro, uh, the movie, the the WBF. Did that did that kill his pride at all? Did that like uh, uh, compromise a bit of his ego? Oh, it had to. Tink in the armor, so to speak. Definitely had to, bro. It definitely had to. Yeah. Uh, We have um, Rollin four ninety nine. Do you guys consider WWE Monday Night Raw to be the flagship I, television show, even though The Rock and Roman Reigns appear only on WWE SmackDown? I don't. I don't. And, and that's interesting, Vince, because if the sell, the $5 billion sell was raw to Netflix and SmackDown feels like the flagship show, it feels less stretched because it's only two hours instead of three. And it averages about a half million people, more people week, weekly. And you have two, your two, literally your two bigger stars of the company, The Rock and Roman Reigns currently. You have them exclusively to this brand. I mean, don't you think Netflix would be trying to bring over uh, SmackDown as well? I, 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 I see, bro. That's that's the problem, Chris. When you're dealing with some of these network executives. They know nothing about wrestling. That's true. Yeah. They have no. They have no clue. Yeah. So the the pitch could be like you could see the likes of The Rock. You know, what I mean, right. even when it comes to Raw, you can, yeah. you can you can pitch that. So yeah. Well, they they do see the likes of them in 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 videotape every week. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So as long as you say the likes of, yeah. there's your pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got Co jacked up. Nine nine nine. I don't know why they wouldn't have Rhodes on SmackDown as soon as he challenged Reigns. They hurt Rollins the last few weeks with him only worrying about defeating the bloodline instead of worrying about his own belt. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. And and even and Drew's even talked about that. I mean, he's like, man, why are you worried about the bloodline? And he got uh, uh, Claymore at the end of the show. So. All right, Vince, you want to do a rundown of uh, the show when you're Yeah, your let's team? go, because I'm going to tell you what my biggest pop of the night was. Gunther, right. Gunther over Dominic, predictable. Um, Carter and Chase are back, bro. Woo! Yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> so they bring, they bring Carter and Chase back to lose to uh, Shayna Baszler and Zoe. Yes, uh, that was very predictable as well, bro. I'm 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 very confused with the whole Carter Chase thing. They bring him in, they win the belt, they lose the belt, yeah, they out. disappear, yeah. they bring him back, and now they're jobbing him out. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, um, Becky Lynch and Nia Jax with the uh, Liv Morgan stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, again, bro. Like I said earlier, Chris, they 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 need to create new matches. Mm-hmm. So now they got a match against Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. I'm sure it's not going to go anywhere, but it's a different match that they're going to have next week on Raw. Yeah. Where do you think Liv and Nia goes WrestleMania-wise? Liv and Nia? Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't. I, I mean, I don't know if Liv is a priority uh, mm-hmm. right now, but um, mm-hmm. I don't know, bro. I mean, God, they, you know... <laughs> You know, again, bro, when Nia came back, there was such a push. Yeah. And just yeah. here we are, man, you know. I wonder if the push was for Perth the whole time. And then, you know how it is, Vince. I mean, a lot of times you you push someone, they reach the, they reach the pinnacle, they lose the match, they're supposed to put over someone, and after that, they just kind of. That's horrible creative, out. Chris. Yeah, I that's, agree. That's so bad creative. It's, it's not supposed to work that way. Agreed. Absolutely. When you get somebody to that level, you got to sustain them at that level, man. They never, ever do that. They yeah. never do that, bro. 
Yep. Uh, we're at, uh, so within the times that you said there was a few backstages with Adam Pierce, damage control, Shinsuke, and then damage control yeah. post-match and then judgment day was backstage. And then another was Adam Pierce and ricochet and then judgment day. So you had all these people put and, and what did I say, Vince? Didn't I say there was going to be a number one contenders match? But here's the interesting thing. First of all, bro, let, 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 let's get back to the PG rating. Yeah. Bro, that one backstage announcer. Uh, who? The um, the one who does the ESPN stuff too? The I, I don't know. I, I, male or female? Help, help us out. Uh, the one who was coming out of a shirt, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my God. Really, yeah. bro? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, bro? Holy yeah. moly, Chris. <laughs> All right. I had yeah. to bring that up, Chris. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Very, very distracting. <laughs> Here's what I want to know, bro. Chris, if you could explain this to me, I'm going to nominate you for the Pulitzer Prize. Very nice. So right, we got all these guys that want the shot at Gunther, want the shot at Gunther. So then Pierce cuts the promo. He he has six men that think they all deserve a shot at Gunther. Yes. How in God's name is R.D. McDonough on that list? <laughs> Can you please explain that to me? I don't think this guy has won a match in the last six months, but Pierce is going to say he's one of the guys that – explain that to me, Chris. Go ahead. Explain so, he's, so he is by proxy of Damian Priest because – as we saw, you know, the previous Raw, on the previous Raw episode, the, the beef was Priest and Gunther, and now Priest has, you know, stepped aside from that. He's back to his tag team commitments. And in proxy of uh, Damian Priest, they're doing kind of like a free bird rule when it comes to oh, these contenders. Ah, oh, the free bird rule. Okay, now yeah. I get it. Thank I you. Chris. Free bird Thank rule, you, Chris. absolutely. Chris, uh, I'm, I'm going to say it again, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Sami Zayn beat Nivar. When you when when I'm sitting there looking at the size of these two guys, I'm going to say it again, Chris. Let, let, let me make this perfectly clear because I'm speaking as a casual fan. Mm -hmm. When Sammy got over with the use, Sammy got over on his comedy. Mm -hmm. That entire angle with the bloodline had nothing to do with his res wrestling ability. So when you got a casual fan watching Sami Zayn against Ivar, who's twice his size, Ivar should eat this guy for lunch. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, you missed Andre and Apollo Cruz. Well, uh, it was right after that. I, I didn't even know Apollo Cruz was. Man, still on the I forgot roster, that he bro. was still that's there. What, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I was like, he's still on the roster. And look at him, man. He looks jacked to the gills, and he looks like a star, man. But they keep jobbing him out, man. I, yeah. I, I'm surprised he even has a job uh, there. Honestly, uh, a few backstage segments. You forgot the uh, so the Finn and Priest against uh, Kaiser and Vinci too. They they won. They went over Imperium there. Yeah. And then Paul Heyman announced his Hall of Fame inductee, Drew McIntyre's uh, interview. Then the Sammy and Ivar, Bronson Reed attacks him post match. I think I think they did that to put uh, to make Sammy look more like the underdog because he's going to win next week. Yeah, and also that gives him another match. Yeah, exactly. You know, that'll give him another match. Exactly. So, um, yeah, bro. One thing, one note I had here is that oh my god, bro. The the the, the scene they did in the back with um, Indy Harwell and yeah. oh my god, yeah. And and again, bro, flying those girls in for that—that that is a rib. Mm. It is one hundred percent a rib. That added nothing to the show. There was no need for it. Whatever. I think they're going to do the like I said before. I think they're going to do the uh, woman's tag multi-person match yeah. or some gauntlet or something like that. Yeah. Uh, then Gunther cuts a backstage interview, gets interrupted by Chad Gable. Um, this is for for his child. And bro, how weird was that? He said 
the, 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 keep in mind, Gable's the baby face. Yep. And Gunther's the heel. So Gable says to Gunther, I'm going to take that smile off your face and put it on my daughter's. Mm-hmm. Then Gunther laughed oh. right in his face and walked away. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, bro, you got to protect these yeah. guys, bro. If anything, he should have walked away and Gable should have jumped him. Yes. Yes. He laughed in his face. Well, he and slapped walked- him right there on his face. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, boy. Yeah. And then we had Uso Man. and Drew. And, and bro, th- 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 this is just horrible, too, because Solo comes down. Cody gets rid of Solo. Then Jimmy's just hanging out ringside, and and Jay stops everything to turn. Like, come on, bro. Can, can it be any more predictable than predictable that? Predictable is precisely what I was thinking. I mean, that's, uh, like, you knew that was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. All right, we got a few super chats, and we're going to head, head out here. Um, we have Zoo Bear. Two dollars. McIntyre yep. and Jay again. Same match with no stip. Why? It's a, it's content creation, man. Same old, same old every single time. And how does this help Jay if he keeps losing matches and then beats Jimmy? And Jimmy doesn't win matches either nowadays. I mean, like he's like he's he's playing a lackey in the bloodline. Yeah. And now, for some odd reason, we're supposed to think that, you know, we're supposed to buy in Jimmy and Jay right now? I've got an answer for that. All right, what, what you got? Top of the third. Top of the third, ladies and gentlemen. Top, <laughs> top of the third. <laughs> top of the third. Yo, of the third. <laughs> hey, Chris, it's a long top of the third. Oh, it's, it's been long, man. It's you know, the, the, the home team is batting around and yes. around and around and Lots around. Lots of fouls. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, top of the third. Oh. Yes, indeed. We got Cole jacked up. 49. If it's Rollins versus Cody at SummerSlam, would Rollins lose to Cody for a fourth or fifth? That, 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 that's coming? a great point, bro. <laughs> like that's that that really is a great point. See, bro, that that's the thing. Like, we used to go, bro, so many times we would go, you know, rock in Austin and come back to rock in Austin and rock in triple H and come back. But how we got back was story. Yep. That that's how we got back. So if you don't keep getting back to this thing through a story, then, then it's exactly what Kojak up said. You're going to look at how many times Cody beats Rollins and you're going to say how many times you got to beat this guy. That's true. I do think there is a story because he lost to Cody three times. Um, because if Cody only if Cody keeps the belt for four months, I mean, you know, that's a decent reign. And if Seth does be the one who beats Cody, you know, for the championship, and then Cody comes back and beats Seth again, I wouldn't be opposed to that. You know, I mean, just to have just to have SummerSlam be kind of the break in the rain just to continue the story, you know, swap belts and Cody had a four month reign. You know, I'll oh, be okay. Uh, with we, we, we got to sit through Cody and, and Seth promos. Uh, of course. Well, I mean, uh, what else do we have nowadays? This, this is wrestling 2024 is sitting through Cody and Seth promos. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, zoo bear, $5. <clears throat> Besides Rock, y'all agree less star power from WrestleMania than last year. Also, when we mentioned there is no real man in the world, just doesn't that apply to WWE too? No real man in the world. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. When we mention, explain that to a Zubair. Um, y'all agree less star power from WrestleMania than last year. They they had Trish, Cena. Um, who did who, Cena wrestle last year? Austin Theory lost to Austin. Oh Theory. my God! See yeah. <laughs> yeah. her against all. Yep. Let's see where wow. that led him. <laughs> and, and Austin Theory went over. Yeah, he won. Oh, yeah. that skyrocketed his career for the yeah. next year. Oh, you know, but God. but the but people get that Cena curse, man. I mean, the Miz beat Cena and just tanked. Uh, um, uh, who else? Um, oh. Uh, Austin Theory beat Cena and tanked. Solo, Solo, he, he beat Cena and he tanked. Like I think he, I think he lost like twenty three straight matches after beating Cena or some crazy statistic. And of all, like, and of all people, they had Cena beat Bray, right? 
Yeah, the, he well he he beat Bray one WrestleMania and then lost to him during okay. COVID. Yeah, right. he, um, but Bray after that didn't really. I mean, yeah. he, he that didn't help his career at all. I mean, he, he didn't launch after that. Um, yeah. So explain the other thing. Oh, uh, what happened to um? Uh, what's her name? Um, Bray's uh, JoJo. No, oh, no, the one, the the the, the um the the blonde who oh, was. Uh, yeah, what what where's oh, she? She's wife and mother now, man. Yeah, yeah but she she's... gave birth a while ago, right? Yeah, she's she's enjoying wife and my man, man. Kudos to her, man. Kudos to her. She's like, man, I'm I got some good money. You know, husband's very successful, and uh, you know, she still I she still posts stuff on IG, and she's talking about like something about the airport or something like that, and. She cut her hair, and she's. But got she's still in the contract with them, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think I think so. I don't know. I mean, cl- clearly they don't have anything for her, but wow. I mean, from what I know, there hasn't been any type of formal, you know, announcement that she's been that she's gone from the company. Yeah, she's just kind of sitting back. I, I think because they don't have anything for, her, I don't think she's pushing them. To, for them to you know find something yeah. for her, I think she's just kind of riding the wave and just waiting on a call. But until then, she's like, "Oh, I'm not rushing anything." Yeah, I mean, no, you, absolutely yeah. good, good for her. Yeah, good for her. Um, we got uh, Zoo Bear five dollars. Uh, thoughts on WrestleMania no longer in MSG or New York, especially for tradition like one ten and twenty. We'll we'll never forgive New Orleans and the Saints for WrestleMania thirty. So there hasn't been a WrestleMania in New York since WrestleMania 20? Um, I believe so. Yeah. Wow, that that's, was, uh, that's 20 years. That's a, long, yeah. that's a long time, bro. Yeah. Rollin, 499. I feel like I ask you guys this question every month because the answer isn't clear. Who was the face of the WWE? Roman Reigns, Cody Rose, or The Rock? God, I would say Reigns. I was. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think I, yeah. I think I said that before, but but you know what, Roland? Like Chris, this should not be. Th- this should not be a hard question to answer. I agree with that. You yeah. know what I'm saying, yeah. Mike? It really shouldn't be, bro. Yeah. You know, I mean, we we can go through every major league football, baseball, sure. basketball, hockey team, and name one guy. Sure. Immediately, we we can do that. We, th- this should not have to be that difficult. Yeah, I think they're trying to make Cody the face. I think they want him to make the fa- be the face because he's the he is the baby face of of the WWE right now. Roman Reigns is the the one who's caused them to be successful with the bloodline stuff. But I mean, I think they're trying to make Cody the face for for foreseeable future. <clears throat> Co jacked up four ninety nine. Raw is going to give Rollins and Rhodes Universal belongs to SmackDown. Give up Rollins and Rhodes. Raw is going to give up Rollins and Rhodes. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, because Rhodes is going to beat um, Reigns. So he's going to be on SmackDown unless they swap titles and do something there. Because because essentially, you're going to have two Raw guys winning both championships. Because there's two Raw, Bro, there's Reigns two is, Raw people. Reigns, going Reigns is going over. I'm, I'm for it, man. I, I mean, look. That's how they're gonna. I don't know if that's gonna Cody happen. Cry babies, bro. That's how they're gonna sure. stick to the Cody cry oh, babies. That'd be so funny, man. That would be hilarious. Zubair, five dollars. Weeks ago, we talked about modern dating, and Russo talked about how men are not men anymore. Isn't true, man? Is it? Is, is it true? I think. Is it true? Men aren't men anymore in modern. No, there, there, there's a couple of men. There, 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 there's a couple of real men, but there's a bunch of sissy Marys, bro. Mm. The wrestlers that cry is Sissy Marys, bro. Sissy Marys. Or cry, Cody Cry Ravers. All right, last super chat. We got Jordan Builds, $5 in a three hour show. Why did I keep cutting out all the entrances tonight? Imperium, Caden. Because they were uh, running late. That, that, that happens, Jordan, when you have a live show and you're running late. Something went long. So w- when that happens, bro, you got to start editing on the fly. Yeah. And that's that's why you start cutting entrances. You know, the, I, I promise you, the show was written with all the entrances, but something went long and they had to start cutting. And it was probably the opening promo. Yeah. Uh, the rest of that was Imperium, Kaden and Katana, and others got their job or entrances tonight. Bro. Yeah, that's why. 
All right. Lastly, Zoo Bear, $5. <laughs> Dr. Chris, please break out the Black Scorpion in honor of Ole Anderson. Oh, Since that's great. Yes. The angle. Also, don't forget the whoop whoop in the end. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if he's around, man. He's oh, around. come on, man. Ah, there he is. There he is. There's a black scorpion, man. I have to find out. Uh, I have to take this uh, super chat off, uh, actually. There we go. All right, let's see what we got, man. Uh, Check one, two. We got sting, sting, sting. (laughs) Hold on. Here's a black scorpion. Hold on. Sting. Is it here? He is. That shit that he does. I mean, he, with the hands in the pants. <laughs> no, that's that is, that's not him. That's somebody else. <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not. Uh, Sting. Sting. There we go. Check, Check one, one two. two. I'm trying to look for my uh, thing here. My my voice thing here. I got I got a d- different mixer, but uh, check. Sure. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an, an echo, echo to right, right now. now. It's Sting. Sting. You retired yesterday, yesterday. but there's there's one one person person who you did not not defeat, defeat. and that that was was none other. No, that's not the voice. I I can't can't find it. You got the voice. I can't find it. Come on. I can't find it. This is the voice. (laughs) Come on. That's not the voice. Hold on. Here we go. Here's the echo. Wait a minute. I found it. Check, 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 check. Is this it? Okay, here's the deal. No, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Okay. Uh, there we go. No. Uh, check, check. One, two. No. Nope. I'm trying to find because I'm a mixer. mixer. That's echo. That's because uh, uh, this is sound effects, but it's not working though. So there you go, man. Sorry, sorry, Zubair. I was trying to have my sound effects work. But they are not working, so uh, that's too bad, man. Too bad. All right, Vince, what you got for us, man? Well, I got to give the whoop whoop. Oh, yeah, whoop, whoop, whoop. whoop at the end. Whoop, whoop. You know, one of these, one of these, uh, one of these sound effects was actually working. Um, I gotta find, I gotta find it. I got, I gotta give it back to you, uh, Zoo Bear. I gotta figure out which one of these sound effects is. Uh, Cause I, cause there was a, there was a sound effect that actually worked before. But you know, you were, you were, you were, yeah, I know, but that was my, that was with my other mixer. Oh, your other mixer. Man. Yeah, that was my other mixer. All right, let's do a, let's do a whoop whoop for the, uh, for the road. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Oh, you got to love the ladies. poor whoop whoop girls. Let the listeners know about the brand, my man. Guys, I'm just going to remind you, you never been a subscriber of the Patreon. Go there right now and get a free week of the brand. No obligation, no nothing. It is free. I want you to try it out. Patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC. Russo TWC. Yes. TWC, 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 TWC. TWC, that's a that's, that's an echo. echo, echo. echo. Oh, there, there it is. is. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Check, check one, two, one, two, two, two. Oh, that's, 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 that's an echo, echo too. too. Check one, two. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We'll figure check, it out. Check we'll one, figure two. it out for next week. Yeah. yeah, we'll figure it out next week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this guy right here is Doc uh, <laughs> Vince Russo. I'm Doctor Chris. This is the writing. Uh, this is the uh, what are we at? Leads in a row. (laughs) Have a good night, everybody. So long.